Hey, hey, this video right here is how to properly evaluate marketing and ad campaigns to decide if they're successful. Because that's what I want you to do is make a decision, right? Which is an educated, informed choice on whether or not you keep doing that marketing or that advertising. I want to tell you a quick story here to illustrate the point of this. I see so many companies leaving seven figures on the table because the way that they make decisions about marketing channels and advertising is so binary. It's like pass or fail. And if it's fail, we get rid of it and move on to something else. Okay. And there's way more nuance to it than that. And this story will illustrate that. <clears throat> I've been working with a, an HVAC company here for about two years. Now, when I first came in, I was hired to kind of um, get their marketing on the right track, right? They were plateaued at a certain revenue per year and couldn't get past that. And marketing, they figured was like a big part of that. So they had me come in and I started to have these meetings with them on a monthly basis. And I noticed the pattern with the ownership that whenever we ran ads, whenever we ran marketing campaigns, it was a very binary decision-making pass fail evaluation on whether or not we kept doing that marketing or that advertising. Okay. And I kept seeing them because, you know, owners and operators, you guys are busy, right? You have a lot of hats that you're wearing. You're in this meeting that's uh, maybe 30 minutes or an hour once a month with the marketing staff trying to figure out whether or not you want to keep investing thousands of dollars in this thing to get money into the door for the business. And if it's not, then you want to get rid of it and you want to do something that is. I totally get that, okay? But... Also, most of you don't understand that you need to look at these campaigns in a way that takes into consideration at least a few variables before you decide if you want to throw that baby out with the bathwater, because that's a lot of times what you're actually doing, right? And that's what they were doing. They were seeing this thing. They were putting this much money in. Well, how many jobs did we get out of that? out of that Facebook ads campaign. Okay. Well then let's just quit our fa our, our customers just must not be on Facebook, right? Let's try Google ads instead. Oh, how many jobs did we get out of the $10,000 we put into? Oh, well, uh, we you know we probably should just stop doing that and then try something else. We'll do a direct mail campaign this month instead. Right. But marketing is a journey, not an event. Ad campaigns are a journey, not event. They're a marathon, not a sprint. Right. And you have to look at them with the right perspective to see the variables involved on what could be making that not successful in that binary fashion, right? You got to break it down a little bit. Okay. Like if you took just a, at a very basic level, let me just start to dig in here. If you look at any marketing campaign, right? We're going to look at has two components, really primary components in a service-based business. right? You've got acquisition is the way I like to look at this because it's more effective to look at it this way as a, as a whole is what we're talking about here, right? And that consists of marketing, which is leads. And then you have sales, which is going to be appointments. And these are going to go here to get this. <clears throat> Almost always, 100% of the time, right? So we've got one right here. Basically, we've got two variables that we're talking about at a very minimum of every marketing campaign at a, just the most basic part of this is going to break down even further as I show you. Um, each of these breaks down in individually into other things as, you know, and, but these are the ma two main things that you need to look at any campaign to evaluate whether they're not effective or if they are, because if one is right. And this is what I see a lot as a marketing consultant in my career, right? Marketing is generating leads coming in, right? We think it's exciting. But then we got sales saying leads are bad. Can't get in contact with them. Etc. You've heard it all before, right? So we got two things going on here, right? One of them working, leads are coming in. That's half the battle. Sales is saying that the leads are bad and that they can't get in contact with them, etc. Right. So 
the part of the equation here, if I was just breaking it down to this basic level and I always have to do this with my clients, they're like, you know what? It's just not working. We're not getting the appointments. I'm like, but you got 25 leads last week. And they're like, I know, but we couldn't get a contact with them. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, well, what's your process, right? What's your process for following up with these people? Because the campaign is generating leads and they're like, well, you know what? We call them. And if we don't get a hold of them, then, you know, like, you know, we don't really have time to keep, I'm like, Okay. You see, this is exactly the problem here with this process and just this example, right? And so if the appointment setting team is not calling within five minutes of that lead being generated, is not continuing to follow up twice a day for the next three or four days and then continuing through the next month to get a hold of these people if they can't until they're basically told to F off or there's just a really a dead lead situation, then yeah, the, they're going to think that the leads are bad. Okay. But that is definitely not how this works, right? Like marketing is not so binary that we did this Facebook ads campaign and we didn't get any jobs out of it, right? If that's what you're looking for, there's a lot more to look at inside of that in the context of that. So um, let's see here. So let's see here. The goal of this video here is I want you to stop throwing away money on ad campaigns and marketing campaigns. In general, I just want you to stop throwing money away on them, right? First off, I want you to stop throwing ones money away on ones that actually are a success, but you don't know how to see it. This is what I see the most, okay? I'm not saying you, I'm saying the proverbial you, every business owner operator that I know when it comes to marketing, especially a blue collar local service businesses, home service businesses, their, their campaigns are usually successful to a point but they don't know how to see where that success breaks down into failure. And so they want to quit the whole thing and get, throw it out the window and move on to something else. Right? So they quit by default because they don't understand how to look at that process. I'm going to show you that today. Okay. Next, they need to know at a basic level, I, you need to know at a basic level how to break any campaign down to spot success points and failure points. This right here will earn any of you uh, seven figures a year. If you just Shift your perspective to understand that it isn't binary, yes or no. This ad campaign didn't get me jobs, so I'm going to quit. To look at it from a perspective of like, okay, well, in this campaign, let's look at this. Let's look for success points and failure points along the way. You're going to just that perspective shift is going to cause you to look at things completely differently, and that will change every decision that you make moving forward if you just shift that perspective. So that's what I want to help you shift today into is seeing it that way. Success points and failure points, right? Okay. Next, I want you to know <clears throat> how to know if you should keep running an ad or marketing campaign or if you should scrap it. News for you, you almost never scrap it. If you're looking at it for success and failure points in that marketing campaign, then you're going to look for ways to fix the campaign and where it's not working as opposed to like, is this getting me jobs? This 10,000 in, how much jobs is coming out? Throw it away, right? So as I talked about before, those are the three goals. But as I talked about before, we talked about acquisition as a mind shift, mindset shift, right? That's one thing that I want you to do. Think about this as acquisition not sales versus marketing, okay? Although both of these pieces are within this, it is not just that. You have acquisition that has both of those pieces in it and one is meant to separate the other and one is meant to tee up the other, but there's a process here that these need to work in conjunction, in coordination with each other effectively in both of them because they both, I would say about 50% of the reliance is on marketing, right? But the other 50% is going to be on appointment setting. Really? It's that big of a deal. <clears throat> if those calls aren't handling, aren't being handled properly, if follow-ups not being done, if those things aren't handled properly, then all of what you generate over here, you could be generating a hundred leads a month and none of them will turn into appointments if this is not also working as well. Okay. That's your acquisition here. These need to be working together at all times. And you need to look at them in that way as that one could be breaking the other. If this one is working, then this is the one that you focus on until you really actually determine that this is causing the problem here. And rarely, if almost never have I seen it in two decades where what's happening here, if this is generating leads, that this is not the problem to, to a large portion of the degree. 
right? So that's the shift that you need to make. We're talking about acquisition here, which marketing and sales are part of, and you need to have both working effectively to be running any kind of proper lead generation campaign or have success there, okay? Now, how I see most owner operators judge companies or campaigns is binary, yes or no. Or again, are we got money in? And how many jobs? Right? Not enough? Quit. Not that simple, right? Let's look at a couple of campaign examples just for uh, to illustrate this. Okay, I'm going to do a couple. I'm going to do two different examples here. <laughs> Example one: We're going to do a direct mail campaign. Okay, we're going to do HVAC. And it's going to be a maintenance promo, promo to get people in the door to do their maintenance and the tune-up. We're going to send out 100,000 pieces. We'll say 120,000, right? Now, this campaign is going to be 50 grand to run that campaign, okay? Let's break down what this campaign should look like, right? Because you're going to send out 120,000 pieces. The goal here, loss leader up front, we need to get the call in the door from the flyers so that we can set them into an appointment, get our tech in there, and to do the diagnosis and the inspection, give a recommendation. So I'm going to map out what that process looks like, right? First, we're going to send the pieces to the door, right? Piece gets to the door. What's going to happen then? We're going to have a call in from a customer, okay? After the call-in happens to the customer, hopefully we're gonna set an appointment, okay? Next, after the appointment is set, we're gonna have a maintenance appointment, visit. We'll just call it maintenance visit. Okay, maintenance visit, is going to have an inspection in it. That's the whole point here, right? We're doing a loss leader to get in there. So in that inspection, we're gonna either, we're gonna give a recommendation. All right, let me stop here and go back a little bit. Also, as part of this, once we do the inspection, we're gonna have another option, which is gonna be service. I don't know why I'm capitalizing that one, okay? Those are the two things that happen from that inspection. Now, from the recommendation perspective, what's gonna happen after the recommendation? A call for an appointment, which is follow-up. Or it could be a set for, or it could be also setting the appointment right inside that appointment, right? Call slash set for appointment, all right? Now, there's going to be a keeping the appointment, meaning the appointment actually happens. Let's just say kept appointment. If there's a kept appointment, there's an estimate given, which then, if there's an estimate given, Either a sale is going to be made. Whoa! Woo! That's what we want. If not, though, it's going to be follow-up, which almost never happens with local, local home services companies. This is, I don't know about you, but this is a, an area that y'all have opportunity in. <laughs> Even bigger ones, like $10, $20 million companies have a hard time with this, especially ones that focus on a one call sell, right? Like or a one. Okay. So that's a, that's a process right there, right? All right. So let's do this. Let's break this down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of my marker. Whoa. Two green. Got this a little bit preset up. All right. So really we can't do anything after they're sent. Okay. Um, and if there is not getting a call that's happening here, no call, that's going to be the problems here. Okay. 
Now, if the call is happening, so we're getting calls, right? And is the appointment getting set? Right? That's the question. That's the first point that you're looking at with this direct mail campaign. Where Now, here's what we're looking for again, right? What are we looking for? Repeat it with me. Success points and failure points. Right? Okay, so this is a success point. If we're getting calls, success, right? So we, we leave that alone. We're done with that. We're done looking at that, that point for now. Next thing that we're looking at, is there a call in? If it's yes, we're done. No? Then we're looking at why there's no call, why there's no call-ins. Or I'm sorry, why there's no appointments being set here. Okay, if there's being calls happening, why is there no appointments being set? If there's no, then it's going to be probably the appointment team. How are calls handled? Right? So we want to be able to listen to calls coming from this campaign to see what's going on there. Okay? Now, if the appointments are getting set, our visits are happening. Good. That's really not a point of like, this is probably always going to be happening. Most likely if you get people that call in about maintenance, they get the appointment set. They're going to keep the appointment almost always. It's a very, very low number of people that cancel after that because it's maintenance. They already know what they're getting, what they're paying for. Right. But now in the maintenance at the maintenance, um, appointment, we're going to do an inspection. Right now, this is another point of where we could possibly have a breakdown. So is the inspection we're going to be doing a recommendation here on this inspection. Okay. If there's service, they're going to make a recommendation. If we're not getting any services out of this, then what's the problem there, right? If we're not getting, and now, and the next part is the recommendations that are being given. Are we getting appointments there? Is that happening? Because if it's not, then we need to look at this spot. To fix it. So this is a success point or a failure point, right? If it's yes, we cross it out. And we move on to the next thing. You see where I'm getting at here? If we look at this. We got a couple of points here. We got one, two, three places where that could be broken down in this campaign. Four places right here when it comes to inspection is there service that's being done, right? If we aren't getting any service appointments out of the inspection, now we need to look at our tech team and see if they're doing their job on recommending that to happen, okay? Next, we've got our recommendations. What we're giving for recommendations, if we're giving a recommendation for a system installation, is that person gonna be scheduling for an appointment here, right? That's what needs to be happening. If it's not happening, what's the problem there? Why is that, rec how's that recommendation being given? Is there a way to evaluate that step in the process to see if there's a better way for us to make sure that that recommendation is creating enough urgency and excitement around getting that appointment? Okay, so once that appointment is scheduled, if that's what's happening, right? The next step here is gonna be to look at, is that appointment being kept, right? If it is, then great, we cross that out and we move on. If it's not, then why? Right, very simple. Why is that happening? If the call for the appointment, if the appointment's being scheduled and they're not keeping the appointment, are they not knowing what's happening? Are they being pushed and kind of forced into scheduling the appointment but they don't really want to? Is there enough value being conveyed about what the process is gonna look like when that comfort advisor gets there for that, uh, that next appointment for them to be excited about what's gonna happen? That's what we're gonna look at next, right? Now, if we have the appointment being kept and the estimates are being given and we don't get sales, why? Per, we need to know why that's happening. Is there a problem with the presentation? Could it could be? This could make the whole the whole ad campaign look like a failure if we're not getting these sales numbers as a portion of that revenue that's coming in from those tech turns and service calls that we're going to be generating from a maintenance 
this from this maintenance campaign, right? We're spending $50,000. So we're sending out 120 mail pieces. That means that we're going to generate 500 maintenance calls, which at a certain percentage should turn into service at $500 per average ticket there. And then maybe we're going to get 10 of these system replacements out of that, which are going to be 10 or $12,000 a piece. And that means that we should have another $120,000 in revenue there. So if these aren't happening, this could make the entire campaign only break even or a, or a failure, a complete loss if we don't have that. So we need to know what's going on in the sales process, right? Now, next part is if they're not getting sales, we're doing follow-up. So is follow-up leading to another appointment? call or close if not why because this right here is going to be the fortune is in the follow-up folks and if we're not having a good system in place to follow up if our reps aren't following up after this until they're told to f off and they're not doing it in a way that's valuable and is actually making sure that that customer feels taken care of and that their questions are answered or they're not doing it at all, then we're going to lose out on hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue from these campaigns. We're going to spend $50,000 for nothing. So as we look at this here, holistically, right? We got one point here. We got two points. We got three points. Three points of optimization, four points, five, six, seven places that this campaign could be breaking down. And if you don't know to look at it this way, then you don't know what's actually going wrong. You're not looking. And now look, here's the part that is, here's the part of this that is marketing. Basically here. Okay. So if this is doing its job and the calls are coming in, everything else is sales. Okay, so if any part of this is the problem, no jobs, right? We can scrap an entire campaign if we don't look at this properly and we blame it here. This is where the blame goes almost always for you guys, okay? Okay, I'm just laughing at it because I've seen it so often and I have to explain this to them. So let's look at another campaign structure here. Let's look at let's look at a Facebook ads campaign. This is what I love doing because this is what I run most for my camp for my clients. But let's look at Facebook ads. Am I too big right now? Am I too too zoomed out? Let's go. Let's zoom in a little bit further. Ads campaign you can read my writing. We're going to be looking for installation estimates with a great deal when they get an install on a full system. Okay, that's our that's our campaign. Okay. Now here's how the Facebook ad campaign breaks down. Let's, let's go through this here. Okay. First thing that's going to happen is we're going to have an ad, right? That's where it all starts. That's where the bread and butter is. There's a lot of components to this, but the ad, the goal for the ad is to get clicks and signups because that's the offer being good with urgency. I've got a whole, whole, other video and blog posts around how to create a, a successful offer. So if you want to know what that is, let me know. It's really valuable and it's 80% of your, of your ad campaign success will rely upon how you do with the offer. But the goal here with this ad, and if we did the offer right, we did the urgency right, we did everything right on the ad, that we're going to get clicks, okay? Because we're going to be telling them that they're going to be signing up for this offer. So they're going to click the ad. And then if they click the ad, then the goal is to get them to sign up that's where we get our contact info. Okay, you with me? All right, let's keep going. So if they sign up, then the next thing is to make contact with that lead. Again, very similar to like the last one, right? Making contact with the lead, okay? Next, if we make contact, is to set an appointment.
Then the appointment is set. It's going to be kept. And you got to look at it this way, right? Just because it's set does not mean it's going to keep. You're going to have percentages of these all the way down. And then if it's kept, is there a sale made? And if there's not a sale, you're going to have follow-up. Again, almost non-existent, especially with one call close culture sales teams. Okay? All right. Zoom out. How many steps is that? Because we're trying to get, all we're trying to do is get install estimate appointments leads here. Okay? Pretty simple, cut and dry. We're not going for maintenance. So you don't have that other component of like maintenance, inspection, recommendation, and then sales conversation, and then follow up, right? You just have people at the ad. Are they clicking? Yep. If they are clicking, then they're, they're, the ad's probably good, okay? Leads generation perspective, if they're clicking this, most likely they are interested in the offer and they want to sign up. That's why they're clicking that ad, okay? It's not rocket science here unless you're deceiving them into that. But usually if you're doing your job right, your offer's good, you're clear about what they're getting and what they're signing up for, and they click it, they're interested, which means that they should be getting signups, right? So if they're clicking, are they signing up? There could be other reasons. There's, there's multiple reasons why this couldn't be happening over here if they're not signing up, right? If they're not signing up and they're clicking, we could have landing page not working, broke, or form. This happens a lot, believe it or not. Complete marketing campaigns are said, we're not, we're not doing it, but the, but the, the, the funnel is broken. <laughs> the form just didn't work, okay? Could also be like misalignment. See this a lot? Of the ad to the where they're going to convert, right? They click on the ad and then there's no imagery. The offer is different. The, the URL is weird and they don't feel like they can trust signing up for that if it's an off you know, if it's an offsite form, right? If you're using something that's on like Facebook lead form that's within the ecosystem, it's a little easier to control. But you need to have alignment there and you need to have them, their expectations being met because every little moment that they click and move to a different page is an opportunity for you to either build trust or destroy your trust that you, the very limited amount of trust that you have, right? So if that click is happening and the sign up is not happening, remember success or failure or failure points, is what we're looking for here, right? So is it yes or no? Yes or no? And if it's no, it's always why. And that's the order, right? If it's getting clicks, then we wanna see if they're signing up. If they're signing up, and if they're not signing up, why? Right, so if they are signing up, can we make contact is the next question. Yes, move on. No, why, right? Could be that they're signing up, but they don't expect to be contacted. So they are expecting an email with the promotion code for some reason, right? Because you didn't tell them that they're going to need to be contacted and they're going to need to schedule an appointment to actually get the promotion. You need to be very transparent. You need to make sure that you set it up for the appointment whenever you're running ad campaigns. And if you don't do that, you're going to have people not answering, not responding to texts, not getting the emails, all that stuff. And that's going to be where you break it down. But you got to figure out what that is, right? Next. If you're making contact, but they're setting appointment, are they setting appointments? Yes, move on. No, why? Are they like surprised that you're calling them? Are they feeling like they're getting surprised out of the blue? Like, don't call me, put me on your do not call list. Like they didn't sign up for anything. Um, like what's going on on that call and, and, and are they scheduling into appointment? If they're not scheduling an appointment, then you got to listen to the calls and figure out like, is this rep handling this appointment call properly? Are they calling and saying, Hey, I'm, we're so excited that you signed up for our, you know, $2,000 off HVAC system installation discount on Facebook 
and we're calling to get you scheduled like we said we would into an appointment for your free estimate where we're going to put that discount on that estimate and give you all the information you need about your new system to make you just to let you decide are they handling that call well and giving them a reason to set that appointment right if they're not then you're going to have a problem. You got to figure out why. And this could be where the whole campaign breaks down. If the appointments can't get set and it's not because of the leads that are not coming in, the leads are coming in, they're signing up. We got contact information. The call is getting made and they're actually getting on the call with the people, but the call, the appointments are not coming through. Then that's a problem with the sales problem process and the way that that call is being handled. And that could totally scrap this entire campaign. Can you see why it's not enough to be like, all right, are we getting jobs out of this Facebook ads campaign? Okay, if it's not, then we'll just move on to something else. No, no. You see what I'm saying here? I, you're probably seeing like, ah, oh, right now at this point in the video, I would imagine, right? So, okay, if they are, if the appointment is being set, is it keeping? Yes, move on. Are the people showing up or are they canceling? No. Why? Why? You see this pattern here? Why? Why are they not keeping the appointment? Right? Is it because you didn't you didn't do a good job with making sure it was confirmed? Are they being pushed into setting the appointment when they don't really want to? Are they uh, not able to get both decision makers there for that appointment? Right, etc. Again, as we keep going down the line, are there being sales made? What's happening in the sales process? If yes, move on. No. Why? And the last why with this, and this is where a lot of the money is lost. So much money is lost right here. Okay, in the follow-up, it, is it happening? Are we getting sales out of that, right? If no, why? And most likely it's because there isn't one. There isn't any. Okay, let's break this down again from that sort of 10,000 foot view here. Let's look at this campaign. So how many points do we have here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places that this campaign could break down and be fail and, and cause a failure. Okay, here's the part that's marketing, okay? Right up to this point, kind of half and half here, making contact, right? Because if we're doing our job here, then we're setting this up to happen. And they're going to expect this when they sign up, knowing someone's going to call them. And they're going to be anxious to actually call the business to make that appointment if we're doing our job here, right? This is marketing though. That's the marketing responsibility. The rest is all sales, really. Actually, the follow-up could be marketing partially too, okay? This is all sales. So if something's going on here, how many points do we have in the sales process here? That could be partly sales. Four different points of breakdown that could be causing this job not to happen. Four of them, okay? Four points, four different things that could be breaking down in this process that could make this campaign a no at the beginning. No leads or no jobs, right? And if you did that, you'd throw this campaign that is actually working. This is working. This is a yes over here. Hell yes if we're getting leads. This happens all the time. This is not the problem. The leads are not the problem. The call center is the problem. And that's what's causing this to happen. No jobs, okay? So I'm sorry I get passionate about this because this has happened to me so many times. <laughs> But hopefully today this helps you as an operator, as an owner to understand exactly what to do to evaluate your campaign, okay? Um, it is not so simple as, are we getting jobs from the $10,000 we put in and how many? Okay, if we're not, then scrap it. Really, it's not like that. And if you look at it that way, you will throw, now you'll throw everything out. You'll throw the baby out with the bathwater over and over and keep jumping from thing to thing to thing and never actually getting success because that's not the right way to look at it, Okay. Now, now you could probably see, do you remember how I said earlier why you almost never scrap? Scrap a campaign? You can see why, right? All these different reasons why the campaign could not be working. It's just too a binary, too oversimplified decision to make to just say, we're done, we quit and move on. You gotta actually look at what the hell's going on. I can't tell you how many times it's this part of the equation. It's the sales, especially with the local home services company. 
because you got, you know, um, somebody at the front desk handling the calls and they're also doing all the other things administratively that they need to be doing. So they can't actually handle the calls adequately. They're not doing it on a script. They don't have a way of actually being a salesperson and building the value for the appointment, handling the call the right way. Following up within five minutes is huge. And over and over, like if you're doing follow up on a lead generation campaign to set an appointment, you need to be doing that within five minutes with both text and a phone call and an email. And then you need to be calling twice a day for the next four to five days that same week until then you start to space it out once a day over the next two to three weeks, right? So you want to be doing follow-up. You want to be continuing to follow up. I would say like overall, if you combined all of the touches, like 20 to 30 times on every lead before they are dead. But most companies do one, one or two, literally one or two. And that's why these campaigns all end up failing, Okay. And that's why that binary decision-making process, uh, hopefully it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable if you've been doing things this way because it's a lot more uh, involved than that and there's a lot more to it than this. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you need an audit, right? You want to have a conversation about your business and your marketing channels and your campaigns and you want to, you're just confused and frustrated because you don't know what's coming from where. Look, I feel you. I deal with business owners like you all the time. That's literally how all of them feel. They're running TV and, and radio and spending a 20 grand a year on that and 10 grand a month on Google ads or 20 grand a month on Google ads, which ain't what it used to be. And the radio station is running that and taking 10% of their, of their spend to do that. And they're only telling them how many clicks they get. And those, the revenue is not tied to get like, there's a lot of components here to track this properly. So if you're overwhelmed with that and you just want to have a conversation to maybe clear up some things and see what your path forward could be to fix some of this stuff and get some clarity around your revenue numbers and your marketing, uh, let me know. I would love to have that conversation with you. Um, I can help you out also with lead generation as well. That's one of the things that I specialize in. Um, I do fractional CMO work for local home services companies where I come in and help them to bring all their marketing together and get it all situated and organized. And then I also do Facebook ads, social paid social lead generation campaigns for local home services companies to generate leads um, for both the high gross profit services and um, maintenance and service stuff as well. So uh, uh, thanks for watching my video here and I uh, hope it was valuable for you and shift that perspective, right? If one thing you take away from this, shift your perspective from not yes or no with your marketing campaigns to this is nuanced. Yes, move on, no why, right? That's what I did with every one of these steps. Yes, move on, no, why is it not working, right? How are all of your campaigns structured? What are the different steps and variables within every campaign? Um, hopefully you can't unsee what I just showed you here. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.